Traffic! Cars! I know where you turn cars and traffic. How can we get rid of it? One man has a great idea. Bicycles, but not just a bicycle, a solar-powered bicycle. Who is that man? It's Rob Carter, Hi, founder Bill. and conceiver of Organic Transit and the ELF, a solar-powered tricycle. Today we're going to get inside one of these ELFs, find out how it works, even take the baby for a test drive. But first, Rob, take us inside and see how these things are made. Let's go. You've done lots of different things. You were in production, and you're also working on developing and designing like super sports cars and everything like that. And here you are in this little old storefront in downtown Durham, North Carolina, developing these solar-powered tricycles, the most efficient vehicle on the planet. How did that happen? 30 years ago, I was working with Porsche and BMW in Southern California. Not far from me up the street, they're building the pedal-powered aircraft, Gossamer, Condor, and Albatross. And at the time, the speed record for pedaling was 55 miles an hour in a very streamlined aerodynamic vehicle. And I realized, wow, one horsepower can move someone down the highway at highway speeds. We're doing something dramatically wrong. So I worked at building a, another tricycle that went about 62 miles an hour on pedal only on flat ground and became vice president of the Human Powered Vehicle Association. Let me get this with you. So you helped design a bicycle, tricycle, yes. that went 62 miles per hour. Yes. What's the record these days? 83.3 .3 miles an hour, one person on flat ground. All yeah. right, so then what happened? So then I put on the first solar car events in the U.S. I consulted with the larger companies, the Canadian government, and then in about the 90s, efficiency wasn't so important anymore. Because the price came down. Price and fuel came down. Right. People wanted SUVs and right. Humvees. Right. So I got into doing documentaries on environmental and human rights issues. And that's where actually I learned how you can tap into customers' passions, how they're actually looking to do the right thing and find it very difficult to do. The greener we make this product, the, the better we make this product, the more people are interested in it. And then you got the idea for this thing. Yes. Right. Yes. When, when did that happen? When, when did you first get your idea for this? So we always knew the technology was there to build a safe, fun, uh, urban vehicle, but the market didn't really seem to be there. But what we did notice was a shift in people's attitudes after environmental crisis. And then I was consulting for a company on bike sharing technology in New York City, and while I was there, I noticed the 280 miles of new bike trails they put in. I saw basically that zeitgeist where people really want bikes. They're gonna have 9,000 bicycles to share. When I witnessed it about four years ago, I knew the time is now to go ahead and develop this project. So you formed the company yes. by yourself? No, well, for a couple of years, uh, gentleman Michael Lewis and I, we worked very hard on coming up with the design. And then we started building some prototypes, mostly of the truck version. And then we came to Durham here to participate in what they call the Startup Stampede, yes. which yes. is a incubator space for startups. And we met John Warsillo from Alliance Architecture, mm -hmm. and he really loved what we're doing. Things just went very rapidly from so there. So Durham's a happening place, isn't it? Very much so. Yeah, There's it's a pretty cool place. There's a lot of cool yeah. activity here. Yeah. So Rob, what, what have we got here? So this is the basic frame. This is an aluminum frame. This is 6061T, which is pretty rugged, like aircraft type of aluminum, up to 45% recycled. But the seat would be located here, the steering is here, and all this is oriented this way to be very, very light, very efficient. So why did you design it this way instead of uh, this way? Well, we have other steering options. We have another one rather than this. We have tillers here. Yeah. They bolt onto here, so it's kind of a personal thing. But eventually, this is going to evolve into a yoke, like an airplane. Okay. And all the controls are on there. Oh, I see. That's what it's like. Yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yes. And uh, actually, we have an app that mounts onto that area there. That's our dashboard. Organic Transit. Yes. It has a GPS. shows how many calories you're burning, how far you got to go, how many bad, how much batteries left, how much carbon you save, how much solar you gained. It provides sound effects. It's also oh, the key that turns it on and so off. You're, you're working very hard right now because you're using up one kilocalorie. <laughs> But I'm not going fast. Yeah, going very fast. <laughs> These are like downhill racing mountain bike wheels. Thirty-eight spoke with a huge 20 millimeter axle. The chain goes back here. This is a uh, continuously variable transmission. So that's a little bit part of the secret sauce. Pedals into this side, and then when the motor goes in place, and I'll show you that on the other one, that goes into this side. So they both have a freewheel on each side. 
that way, when this thing rolls, there's never any friction. It really makes it very easy for most people to pedal. I really haven't had a lot of bicycling experience. Pretty well flat resistant. All right, so let me ask you about the transmission here. You called it a continuous variable transmission. transmission. Yes. So that means it's continuously shifting gears as you go faster and faster. Is that what you mean by that? Partly. So here's the shifter here. It's not connected, but the way it works is that there would be there's no stops. Oh, I get it. Okay. So, so you just put whatever you want, whenever you want, right. and it's kind of like an 80 speed bicycle. Right. And actually, this is technology that came from wind turbine technology. Here it's starting to come together, the motor's in place. Normally, the rack is just a rack, but for us, it's a very structural member. And so the frame really doesn't come together as strong as it can be until the body is on it. Right. So here's your motor, and that's being powered by the solar panels, which are up here on the roof, right? Correct. And here's the throttle. Uh -huh. And the shifter. And the shifter is there. So these are a uh, flexible panel a type of solar panel, right? So it conforms to the body, which is important for us. They're rugged. So you're not shorting them out when you do this stuff. It all stays together. Yes, yeah. yes. So they're a kind of a composite configuration with aluminum and silicon and all these yeah. different uh, substrates that come in all together, keep it strong and rugged and flexible. Yes. So these are 80 watt panels, and that's our standard panel currently. In realistic terms, 15 minutes in the sun gives you about one minute of travel. So suppose you had one of these out in the sun all day, how far could you drive? On a full battery pack, it's pedaling and electric, it's about 30 miles. And so say you came into work, you want to come in all electric because you're wearing nice clothes and you don't want to have to shower. You let it sit in the sun all day. You come home and you pedal to get the exercise. The next day you can go all on electric again because the satin charged up all that. Day. So you can actually ride one of these guys entirely on solar energy. Yes. If you got enough, if you got enough on battery, basically. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, you know, our original intent was to make it as efficient as possible on the pedaling side. Yeah. And then you uh, add the solar and the electric and it only adds to that right. efficiency. Sure. Yeah. So what's this? That's actually the brake light and we have amber ones uh, for turn signals and uh, these are very inexpensive and use very very little power so all the uh, lighting on the vehicles LEDs. And now what is this guy? That's a headlight. Headlight, okay. Yes, yes. And we have different versions of that eventually, different light packages, because we can light up the wheels, we can light up the doors, so they're very attractive and interesting to look at, but total safety feature. Right, you sure. Um, this is a composite of plastic? Or? Yes, this is called Trilon, which is a composite of acrylic. This is the outer part is called Solar Coat, and the inside is an ABS, which is about 80% recycled material. You were telling me about this little line over here. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, so that's an aesthetic feature, but really it's about strengthening. So the frame and the body work together, strengthening each other. All right. So you bolt them together, one holds the other together, and the other holds the other together. Yes. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So this is that solar panel we were seeing before. That's okay. right. This is the solar panel, and uh, it becomes a structural element in the whole body. So it's not bolted. How is this connected? This is uh, actually connected with double stick tape. Tape. A very, very rugged double stick tape is actually how they glue a lot of car parts together. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Wow. Okay, so now here, this looks like something. What, what is, what, what's this way up here? Right, that's actually part of the solar panel, and that's the way we were getting them. The new ones actually have it on the bottom, and so it's not part of it, but... Is this where the gathers the, the electricity, basically? Or? Basically, that's a connection yeah, point, yeah, yes. Okay. And now, what's this guy over here? Is this like a little noose? We make everything as simple as light as possible, so we open up the hatchback, and we just flick that on here, and now you can get in to get to your groceries. Right. And then you flip that up, and this stays up like this. Look at this. Look at this. Two. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> and then, uh, so uh, you can lock things in here, and then grocery bags go into here as well. Is this now ready to be sold? Yes, actually, this is one of the beta testers, and they came back in for some servicing, and we kind of uh, discussed with them uh, you know, the kind of models they're getting and how it handled the bumps and hill okay. climbing and all right. that. So, in, in general, how much does a baby like this cost? Um, generally, our base price is $4,000. When I get in, I grab a hold of the brake so this thing's not going to go anywhere. Yes. I make the big step over across the chain and onto that top tube right there. And then, stand on both of them and lower Sit myself down. down. That's the horn, obviously. Here's the headlights. Left side for blinker, right side for blinker. This is the transmission control, so that pump right there shows it's easier to pedal. The more I twist it the other way, the harder it gets to pedal and starts to flatten out that hill. So you want it easy in the beginning. And brakes over here too, like a bicycle. And here's the throttle. 
that's right. Light. Okay. Yep. There you go. So we got the worst part over with. And then I have to pick myself up. Okay. And they're both brakes. Those are both brakes. Okay. So it's kind of like getting in and out of a kayak. Yeah. Very cool. That was so much fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Glad that you enjoyed so it. so much fun.